All right, so this is the Anet A8 3D printer. Um, it has a few modifications. As you can see, there's an auto bed leveling sensor there. It's the eight millimeter by Tron XY. There is a glass, borosilicate glass bed on here. It's three millimeters. There's a galvanized 20 gauge steel plate underneath that so the sensor can read through the glass. I've uh, flipped the bed 90 degrees and put silicone 14 gauge wires on the heat bed uh, soldered directly to the heat bed itself. There's the Y tensioner you can find on Thingiverse. Uh, this is an X support here. Um, they call them Z supports but it's really so it doesn't move in the X axis as it prints higher, uh, higher Z. There's a X tensioner over there, the filament guide here. This is a dust filter for the filament, so dust doesn't, and dog hair in my case, because my dog sheds everywhere. I have a 90 millimeter cooling fan, a 12 volt cooling fan here with a custom cage. And then I have a micro SD to SD card converter here, so I can use a regular SD card. The spool of filament's held up top on top of the desk and it comes down with just the standard filament there, a uh, filament guide there. I have a strip of white 550 SMD LEDs wired up to the power supply that kind of lights up the bed a little bit so I can see a little better. So pretty much not much more than stock. There's a lot of add-ons on there but nothing crazy. This is running Skynet 2.3.2, Fix 2, I believe. So if you're gonna do this, keep that in mind. Have Skynet set up already. Um, the configuration file has been changed to have the inductive sensor in the correct position already. So what? Uh, basically what happened was I, was I was printing something, I tried to change the nozzle out after I did the uh, large print on the ANET video. Check that out if you haven't seen it already. Um, so I was switching back to a regular 0.4 millimeter nozzle and of course I broke the nozzle throat. And the nozzle throat is just this piece here. It goes between the heat block and the main head. And this portion here uh, just snapped off because I'm using these types of nozzle. Nice. I'm using this type of a nozzle throat which has an indentation between the heat block and the main body of the uh, extruder head. Uh, that just snapped right there at a weak point. Um, these nozzle throats have PTFE tubing in there. They're not all metal nozzle throats. So at any rate, I broke that uh, nozzle throat off so I had to take it all apart, put the nozzle back in, and now when we're back in here we need to auto level calibration right we need the printer to know where the new nozzle head is in relation to what the reading it gets off the auto level sensor as it comes down and comes up so to do that we have hooked up the printer via usb from the main board to my computer and i will now get you into my computer and we're going to go into tools machine control panel and we're already hooked up, but you would go up to this disconnect button. That would be a connect button. You'd pick your correct COM port, and then you'd have it at a baud rate of 115, 200. Now, if you have a different type of printer, uh, this video might not help you as much, but you might have to change that baud rate depending on what the board's running. The majority of printers, especially the DIY kit printers, they're going to be at that 15, uh, 200 rate. So then the tabs up here is your G-code library. If you keep that locally on the hard disk, you'll be able to source those and print them by tethering with the USB. I don't do that, I do SD card. Your communication is just an on running call and response to your printer. The temperature plot is kind of nice. It shows you graphically what your temperature of your bed, as well as the hot end specific, the heat block, the thermistor in your heat block. And then jog controls essentially lets you jog the controls. So we'll go up 10 and it responds, goes up 10 millimeters. Okay, then you can control your extruder and your hotbed over here. You set how hot you want it, hit set. 
make sure the extruder is on you set your fan speed you can increase your fan decrease your fan that's the extruder fan actually the part cooling fan specifically I've removed my extruder fan because it sucks what we have to do here is a series of g-code into the communication box so other programs have very similar mach machine control panels uh, this is Simplify 3D specific, but these codes will work in both Simplify 3D as well as other controls. Kira has a control system. Idea Maker has a control system. You just have to find where that mach machine control is with the USB tether where you can put in a communication code line and then uh, put these in. So what we're going to do is we're just, we already have it preheated to 225 and 60. That's what I'm going to be printing at. So what we need to do now is do uh, set the Z offset to zero, right? And I'm going to auto home with the G28. The sensor is going to go down until it, it senses ferrous metal. It's going to light up red and then it's going to come back up, hopefully. It usually always works, but sometimes... You know technology. Then we're going to lock that home position into the memory of the main board. That's going to be an M500 command. And then we're going to do another auto home. Looks good. Looks like it did when it auto homed. Then we're going to move the nozzle to the center. So G1 will move the nozzle to whatever coordinates you're doing. So think about this kind of as a chessboard. Your X is left to right and your Y is up and down. G1 at X110, Y110 means 110 over and 110 up. This build plate on the A8 is 220 millimeters. So that puts us right, the nozzle right in the center. I use feeler gauges that's what I like to use you don't have to use feeler gauges Let's see I'll bring you in here so this one is 0.18 millimeters you don't have to use feeler gauges for this but I think it does help quite a bit um, what we're gonna do is use the feeler gauge and bring down this nozzle until we just feel it hit the bed So we'll go into our jog controls again. I'm going to bring Z down. I'm clicking every time to bring this down. Well, I'm going to bring Z up actually because it has some filament in there. And that will actually throw off what we're doing. Make sure we don't have any filament in there. That's going to leak out. Just doing the one millimeter increments until about right there I see my sensor activated so I'm going to start bringing it down by the point one increments and then as I do this I'm just going to move this feeler gauge around until I feel it hit and it hit right there a little high or a little low so I'm going to bring it up one I can feel it touching there I would like it a little bit harder to pull out, so I'm going to bring it down one more. Now we have it in the position we want. You can use a piece of paper for this or whatever you want to be distance from the bed, uh, but this I just use a feeler gauge because it's way, way easier. First we're going to go back to our communication dialog so you don't screw anything up. Then we're going to go G92Z0. So now the printer knows that that is considered zero. I always do an M500 to lock it into the memory of the main board. So now the printer knows that that's what it should consider zero. When it starts at zero, that's the height it should consider zero. We're going to do a G30 at the X and Y coordinates that this is going to test what that zero when it goes down and hits that point of zero, what this sensor is actually reading. 
So when it goes down and activates at the height we set as zero, what is this sensor supposed to tell the computer in the printer? So now it outputs a bunch of information here. You can see it here. It says bed, and you gotta be kinda quick with this because it will scroll, but it says bed X, Z. So that 328 number is what this sensor is returning to the computer at the height at which we said it was zeroed. So when the nozzle is that far away from the bed, that sensor returns that value saying the sensor is that far away from the bed, okay? So I like to do this quite a few times, kind of get an average on it. So that's 326 for a Z. This one's 323. This one's 324. So right now we're running about an average of 324. That's 325, still in that 324 ballpark. 327. So now we're up to about 325, 327 again. So now we're at 323. So for me, I'd be confident at setting the Z height. We have to set that at a negative number, right? Because it's negative of what this actually reads. So what we do, I'd be confident at setting that at like negative 325. It's kind of in the middle of everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an M 851 Z negative 3.25. We're going to send it and we're going to say M 500 to lock it in. So you can see now it says here Z offset negative 325. Okay. Now what we can do is now test out how accurate this is going to be when we print. So what we'll do is we will just minimize that. We'll import something, not a vase. Ain't nobody got time for that. So I made sure I'm in the right profile with my scripts that say auto leveling home, auto bed leveling here. So I know it's gonna go through that process. Begin printing over USB. And because it's at the correct temperature right now, everything's set up. It's running in there. I'm going to bring this over to machine control for this emergency stop, just in case something is not going right. So now what it's doing is it's finding the distances from all these points across the bed and it's determining if the bed is off on the X or the Y. And then it should, within the firmware, determine where those differences are and print it accordingly. It should. If it does, is a whole different scenario. It looks like it's actually doing a decent job at this first layer. What I like to look for in the first layer is it's squishing enough it's it's squishing the layers enough that they're hitting each other and that appears to be what's happening so i'm actually okay with that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a stop A thing to remember here with the just the basic stop in machine control, when you're USB tethered, it's going to send a stop command after, see, after it finishes another layer, right? So the last command that it came in, I think those are considered lines. After that last command comes in, it has to wait and then redo it. So if you have to stop, stop, like if you have a problem, if it starts going to the bed or something, hit emergency stop. Otherwise, it's just going to, it's going to keep going on the path that it thinks it needs. So I'm going to go to job controls and go up Z again, get it away from there. I'm going to disable my motors. 
It's all in here. I'm gonna attempt to get this off, which I can. But you can see that first layer a little better now, hopefully. And that those are fused together, so I'm okay with that first layer. And then everything that we just did should be stored in the memory, and now we can print off of the SD card. So hopefully this helps somebody out. Uh, if you have any other comments or suggestions for people, put them down in the comments below. If you disliked the video, give me a comment and let me know why you disliked it. Uh, I'm always looking for ways to improve. Check out maybe uh, some of my other projects on the channel. Currently we are working on 3D printing, a uh, essentially a positive model 3D printed, and we're going to turn that into a soft plastic lure for bass fishing. So if that's something you might be into, check it out. And appreciate you watching. Keep your amps up and your filament dry.